dead prostitute who died while working. Yeah, she died, but she came back screaming. An escort by the name of Mad Nudlow collapsed and died during sex at a hotel in Zimbabwe. A customer had booked her in and the pair engaged in a romp at the Manor Hotel in Bulawayo. The customer was shocked when the woman seemed to flop down lifeless in the middle of their session. They called hotel staff who then called the emergency services. Now, hotel guests were totally shocked when the woman's body was paraded out by medics and put into a steel coffin. As the woman's cold body was being placed in the coffin, she awoke screaming in panic. She shrieked, you want to kill me at police officers. Onlookers were horrified and began running away in terror. In February 2011, Kelly went out snowshoeing on the Beaver Pond Trail in Hookset, New Hampshire. At some point during her hike, the 46 year old fell into icy water, and after the sun went down, her daughter and husband became worried about her. Clearly, the pond she was walking over was not as frozen as she thought, and she was stuck up to her neck in the freezing water. When her husband went out searching for her and eventually found her, she was nearly unconscious and was barely responsive. When she was pulled from the water, she fell into unconsciousness consciousness and her body temperature was in the 60s, which is absolutely absurd. She was rushed to hospital where her heart stopped for over five hours. Doctors attempted CPR and a warming process, but they thought that they'd lost her. In a final ditch attempt to save her life, she was transferred to a specialist hospital and hooked up to a bypass machine which worked to warm and filter her blood. After several hours on ice and five hours medically dead, she was revived and walked out of hospital with minor nerve damage to her hands just five days later. The team who rescued her from the ice was shocked to see her and she became known locally as Miracle Woman. Crazy story of George Ritchie. George Ritchie died of pneumonia during World War II. He was brought to a US Army hospital and died for nine whole minutes. During this time, he saw harrowing visions of hell that would change his life forever. In his deathly dream state, he walked out of hospital wandering around town. Here, he met a strange figure who took him on a kind of Christmas Carol style creepy undead tour of the town. He thinks this man was Jesus. Now, he says that Jesus took him to hell and hell was a bar. There were lost souls there who were trying to drink, but they couldn't. They couldn't smoke either. He then saw other corners of hell as perpetual brawls and aggressive, brutal sex. He said, Sexual abuses were being performed in feverish pantomime. He continued by saying, Perversions I had never dreamed of were being vainly attempted all around us. Apparently, he was awoken by Jesus, who gave him back his life and told him he had 45 years to publish his testimony. George later went on to investigate near death experiences and received a doctorate in psychiatry. In 1978, he wrote a book about his experience that he called Return from Tomorrow. Now, this did fall within the 43 year deadline. In 2007, 33 year old Carlos Cameo was involved in a car accident and was declared dead at the scene. Carlos was taken to a morgue and examiners had begun his autopsy. The man woke when medics began cutting into him because of, and I quote, the excruciating pain. I mean, I can imagine. Carlos began bleeding when he was cut, which is a sign a person is still alive. Now, after a short time, he made his living status known. His wife had been told that her husband had likely died, and she came to investigate his body, only to find him alive and in a corridor. The Venezuelan man conducted a number of interviews with news publications, and he even posed somberly with his autopsy request. It clearly states that he is dead, but he's not dead yet. Analia Buta gave birth to her fifth child 14 weeks early, so around two and a half to three months early. The baby had just 26 weeks of gestation and was born weighing just one and a half pounds. Sadly, her baby Milagros was declared dead, and just 20 minutes after her birth, her mother was presented with her death certificate. The baby was put in a coffin and taken to a morgue. 12 hours later, Mr. and Mrs. Buta went to see their baby's body. When the doctors opened the drawer that she was being preserved in, baby Milagros began crying. 
dying. So Milagros actually translates to miracle, which is kind of what this was. Her parents spent the next year helping her grow stronger and healthier, but sadly she died a few months after her first birthday. Okay, so this isn't quite dead, but a lot like death. Sarah Scantlin woke up from a coma after 20 years. 20. How insane is that? In 1984, Sarah Scantlin was just 18 and had a promising career of dance ahead of her. She was on the dance team at Hutchinson's Junior High Community College in Kansas, USA. One evening, she was out with her friends celebrating the USA Olympic success when she was hit by a drunk driver. She rolled over the roof of his car and was then pushed into oncoming traffic where she was hit again. Her parents, Jim and Betsy, were telephoned and they were rushed to be by their daughter's hospital bed. They feared the worst. Sarah's skull was crushed, her bones were broken, and she suffered internal bleeding. Her parents were told that she would never wake again, but they could not bring themselves to switch off her life support. So she remained basically dead in hospital for around 20 years until she defied all medical expectation and woke up. One of the first things she asked for when she first spoke to her parents was makeup. Her parents were thrilled when she awoke and soon discovered that she'd been able to hear a lot of what was going on around her while she was supposedly unconscious. Now, this forced doctors to to reconsider what they know about comas. Sarah went on to live another decade with the ability to talk, although she was wheelchair bound. She sadly passed away in 2016, two weeks after her 50th birthday. Her family were extremely grateful for the time they got to spend with a daughter that they had previously resigned for dead. guy died and was shown God's spare parts room, then came back to tell everyone about it. Gary Wood was in a car crash when he was 18 and out driving with his sister. He lost his nose in the crash, broke several bones and crushed his larynx. He was declared medically dead for an hour. Now he explained the feeling of dying. He said at first there was pain and then there was great relief. He said death was like taking off your clothes and laying them to the side. He then alleged that he met a friend who had died when he was younger who showed him round heaven. While he was there, he said he saw God's throne room, but weirdest of all, he saw God's spare parts room. This was labelled as unclaimed blessings. He said in this room were spare arms, legs, hearts, brains, you name it. He said that God had a spare part for everyone and angels would take them down to earth to give them to people that need them. Around 50 years after his accident, Gary Wood appeared on Sid Roth to explain his heavenly testimony. An hour after he died, Gary says he was brought back to life in hospital. He told Sid all about it. Dying and coming back from the dead isn't always considered funny, but you may reconsider after you see the cringe reenaction on Sid Roth. I started walking up a green grassy hill. The uh, grass came all the way through my feet, yet there were no indentions where I previously stepped. There were diamonds on the grass. There was an angel standing in front of one of those gates of pearl. dead for three days and has come back to life twice. Meet Miracle Grandmother Hardy Ludmilla Septlitskaya. She is a 61 year old that survived three days in a morgue and has twice been declared dead by doctors. Once she woke up just before the blade was about to cut her during her own autopsy. Her near death experiences came a year apart from one another and she terrified her family who started to mourn her twice. On the first occasion, her daughter had already spent 60,000 rubles planning her mother's funeral. When she came to collect her mother's body days later, she found her breathing and recovering in a hospital bed. Her daughter Anastasia gave an interview to the Siberian Times. She said, I started calling everyone saying things like, uh, sorry, can you please stop digging the grave? Ah, it's done. Okay, well there won't be a funeral, my mother is alive. An awkward conversation. A year later, her mother died again, this time just for a few hours. Two whole new chances of life, what a lucky lady, but I can't help but feeling the next time she dies, even if it's for reals, people are just gonna be like, like, meh. And we have the story of Polish drinker Camille. In December 2016, stories emerged of a Polish drinker who rose up from the dead only to demand more drinks. 
25 year old Camille from Warclaw was drinking hard. Now normal Polish drinking is hard to us, but this was Polish hard drinking which is a beast unto itself. Camille drank so much vodka that he collapsed and died of a heart attack at his local pub. Medics tried to revive him at the scene and again at hospital but then he was declared dead. The thing is though, despite an apparent death from cardiac arrest, he woke up hours later in a morgue which must have been one hell of a hangover. Morgue workers heard banging coming from Camille's unit. When they went to investigate, they found the risen man nude and demanding a blanket. Rising from the dead is thirsty work it seems, and luckily for Camille, the morgue was near his favourite watering hole. He simply got up, shook it off and went back to the boozer for another drink. Ostravie fella. Nostravie. Now while this story sounds like all of the lols, really it should serve as a warning. Yes, Camille did rise again, but he did die of a vodka induced heart attack. His heart may have recovered, but I wonder if his liver ever will.